Mark Hicks's Tramshed restaurant in Shoreditch is one of the most eagerly anticipated openings of the year, not just by the restaurant world, but by Hicks himself, who has seen his very personal plans for the project stalled a number of times. Big Hospitality has been invited to take a sneak peek at the venue and find out what makes the renowned restaurateur tick. Well, welcome Mark, and thank you very much for inviting us to the Tramshed. Now, the plans for this restaurant have been a long time coming. Are you excited about the opening? And do you feel that what you've delivered now is sort of what you had imagined when you first saw the building? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's gone perfectly the plan, really. I mean, obviously, getting to where we are today with, you know, a year and a half in and out of court, draining our bank balance <laughs> because of the local residents, uh, we finally sort of got there. We got pretty much what we wanted from, you know, opening times. Uh, but now the doors are open and you know we're ready for business. You mentioned the impact trying to get the project off the ground has had on the timing of the opening and also the financing. Has it had a big impact on your future plans for the business and what you were planning to do? No, I, I never plan ahead really to be honest. I mean you know this is always going to be a big project. There's lots of elements of this project that you know halfway through you think god yeah we have to spend money on that as well now and so yeah there's lots of things in the mechanical an electrical side that uh, sort of crop up and you just have to deal with it at the time. The concept for the 150 cover restaurant is as brutally simple as the decoration in the tram shed. A rolling starter and dessert menu with mains of chicken or steak alongside vegetarian options. The site also has a daytime presence to placate the local residents who were unhappy with a late licence. There is a gallery and community space downstairs and a takeaway option as well. The, the takeaway come a bit later really because, because of the length of the bar and I wanted to sort of you know, make the place feel alive at lunchtime. So I suddenly thought, you know, why don't we do chicken and steak to take away, but in the form of a chicken salad or a steak salad and a, a nice uh, steak sandwich with crispy onions, mustard, mayonnaise. So that's our takeaway offer, basically. So it's very limited, but people know exactly what they're going to get when they, you know, walk through the door. Now, obviously, you're known for being a cool restaurateur, and here in the Tramshed, we've got some artwork by Damien Hurst, and I believe on the menu, you've got uh, cheeses from Blur's Alex James. Do you find any pressure to keep doing new and unique concepts and keeping up that cool image? No, no, because I think it's quite interesting to have something that's very simple. You know, I mean, even as far as the chicken and the steak and the salad, you know, they're all from individual growers. You know, so I'd, our chicken grower, um, only, we're, we're the only person that they supply, Woolly Park Farm down in Wiltshire. And uh, the mighty marbled sirloin steak from Northern Ireland, which is aged in a salt, um, Himalayan salt chamber. Uh, so we, we are the only customers for that as well. So, you know, we've got a nice story on the menu, although the menu is very limited. You know, the actual story is good. And, you know, uh, uh, the same with the art, really. You know, so that piece was um, made just for us and obviously the theme of the, the cock and bull, you know, matches the chicken and steak. But you don't, you don't sort of feel, um, feel the pressure to be doing something new, you know, you just, you just do what, what you want to do. Yeah, exactly. I, I think, you know, sometimes things, are, I normally find the building first and then work out what I'm going to do with it. So it's uh, rather than have a concept in your head and then find the building, because quite often that doesn't work. Yeah. It's a bit like when I did the chop house, you know, I found the building and instantly it was a, it was a part of old London history. And, you know, I thought the oyster and meat on the bone concept, you know, would fit. Since your work at the Ivy, the move to simple British food, which you championed there, has become huge. How do you react to that trend? And what do you think of the latest trends and the future trends in food? Well, I think it was always going to be a natural thing, you know. 20 odd years ago, you know, we didn't have the same amount of ingredients and quality of ingredients as we have now. You know, we, we relied heavily on importing stuff from France, from Italy. But now our growers, our farmers are producing, you know, great produce, which, you know, means that we can rely on stuff that's sourced purely from the UK. I mean, you know, we've always had great cheeses, you know, between here and Ireland. So, you know, and I think rest of the products, whether it's veg, fruit, salads, you know, it's, it's sort of all falls in line now. So, you know, you can now create a menu that's totally you know, British ingredient led. Balancing Hicks's creativity and constant new ideas is his business partner Ranesh, who met Mark at Le Caprice Holdings. He said they have a very personal relationship and remain committed to keeping control of the business and developing new ideas as opposed to any mass rollout. For me, a large restaurant of this scale is quite scary, as you said. You know, I wouldn't necessarily do it. I like the sort of 80 cover side uh, restaurants, but Mark's with his, with his creativity and with his wisdom, 
you know, took me to one side, we must do this project. And I guess it was my role to make sure that we do it in a controlled manner as best we can and as fast as we can. I think, I think you are quite right about Mark being more financially aware. He's had to be. This is a business at the end of the day. He's got a large network of friends. He's got ideas, you know, that every minute he'll come up with ideas. And I guess it's my role and my manager's role and my executive chef's role to not, not, not sort of draw it back, but let's have a bit of reality about it. And I guess that's what, that's what I do. With Ratnesh, Mark first launched Hicks Oyster and Chop and the Fish House in Lyme Regis, which has just been expanded. Hicks has also launched his own standalone restaurant and bar in Soho and sites in hotels, including most recently at the Thompson Hotel in Belgravia. So which is he most proud of? You know, with Soho, for example, that was a restaurant that had failed. I managed to um, buy it for almost nothing. So the excitement of that project was, you know, what should I do with it? And when I walked into the building, the downstairs bar, which was a sushi bar, um, I sort of walked down the stairs and instantly thought, okay, this is going to be a basement, you know, cool sort of cocktail bar, um, which is what it kind of ended up as. I've taken a lease on the restaurant in Belgravia, the bar and the restaurant. It's in slightly, an, not an odd area, but it's in an area that I've never, um, you know, operated in before. And I think a lot of uh, people were quite surprised I did a, you know, a venture in Belgravia, you know. All the food critics didn't understand why I was in Belgravia, and, you know, they will give me a bit of a hard time about it. Yeah. So that was probably a big challenge for us. You know, the hotel is busier now. We're getting a lot of locals using the restaurant. And it was kind of pre-designed before we, you know, entered into it. So, you know, that was one of the challenges for me, really. And I always like to develop restaurants you know, as, as you go along. So just because that's how it is on day one, it doesn't mean that in six months time, for example, you know, the walls might be a different color or the artwork may have changed or we might add tablecloths, for example. So, you know, things like that. So yeah, each building's different. And for me, every project is exciting. I, I don't think any project should be a dull project. You know, I think we need to look at the building, work out what you're going to do with it, and then just, you know, then just do it.